Thanks for being here so early. Uh, I'm also surprised I'm here. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, seduction, yeah? And how you can use seduction in business or in your job search. So first of all, I thought I would introduce myself a little bit. So those are some of the brands um, I've been working on in my career. First ones is when I was living in Paris. So I worked for Sorbonne University and then McDonald's. For the one who know I've done some entertainment marketing in Crazy Horse and then I've done Carrefour. The other brands are mostly my experience in uh, Prestige, so Fredericks in Procter & Gamble, and then those are um, the business I founded or co-founded, Resin Wild World Fitness Academy, Incredible Cuisine, and my personal uh, brand. So this is a bit so that you see my own companies. So this well, we finished this one, but we were selling uh, shapewear, so which you wear underneath your clothes to uh, smooth your curves. And we were, uh, when we launched, uh, we were considered one of the best shapewear in UK, which was our key market by the independent. And I worked in this academy with uh, Anna Lundberg. Uh, we train uh, companies for both um, ensuring that millennials succeed in the workforce and ensuring that corporates survive um, modern times. Then I did incredible cuisine. It started as a, as a challenge to myself. Can I get a, a video viral uh, without the money of Procter & Gamble? And then um, I created this uh, Pokemon ball cake and then I made it uh, viral. There was a lot of work, but okay, three million and a half views. And then my personal. <coughs> and so since seduction is about communication, I thought, okay, how many of you um, are currently having a business? Okay. How many of you are currently looking for a job or will look for a job? Okay, fantastic. <laughs> okay, so this is my commitment to you. Um, today you're going to get away from this presentation with a slightly different way to look at business. And at least one idea, so that you like commit very low and then over deliver. At least one idea, um, innovative idea for you to grow your business. So the agenda. I'm going to give you, since I'm the expert, uh, in the next 10 minutes about uh, seduction. And then uh, what is the seduction model? And then we're going to, to go through the Incredible Cuisine, which is uh, my company um, example, so that you can see how, how you can activate that. So about the lesson. Like every, every lesson, we should start with the vocabulary. So who, who can tell me what this is? Don't be shy because this seduction is this way to talk. <laughs> it can happen with any application. It can happen with any So, this is a really late at night. Somebody is uh, booty calling a partner, hoping for some like transactional sex to happen. And then, at the very extreme, very committed situation, this is a love relationship, right? And so, the question is. What happened between the two? This is seduction, right? The more seduction, the more there is some commitment. Because indeed, there is a lot of effort that happened for the seduction um, to exist. And then, just to clarify what I imply as a seduction, um, I imply a very old fashioned seduction where you have a seducer who really likes another person and want to seduce another person who is a victim. Hopefully, at the end of the day, it will be a willing victim. Yeah, so everybody is willing in, in this room, but it's like a one-way seduction, and it's not always like this. And it's not always a man uh, towards the woman, but okay, that's uh, what you should keep in mind. Questions? So the seduction model, and I want to go back a little bit on the story. So right now, uh, I'm. Um, I'm mentoring and coaching a lot of uh, small startups uh, and entrepreneurs. And the question was when I started engaging with them is which kind of framework I'm going to use to explain them how to run successfully a business. <coughs> and I come from Procter & Gamble, so of course there is a, a successful framework, especially towards marketing, and then there is the uh, business model canvas. And then I realized this is pretty complicated for somebody who is not an expert and who is starting. Yeah. So I decided, okay, I need really to go back to basic and to something that people really understand and uh, know. And so 
my principle, my foundational principle is that uh, business is exactly like a relation. Yeah. So you can have one kind of relationship where uh, your clients are going to ask you for discounts, will contact you last minute and giving you very, very small tasks, low value tasks, and then this will generate a lot of frustration. Yeah. So what, that's what I call in business, this is a booty call relationship. Yes, so. And then there are other relationships where you aren't asked for discounting, you are contacting advance for very high value uh, tasks, and there is a fulfillment. And this is a love relationship in business. Yeah, there is commitment, there is a long term uh, will to work together. And if you don't know where you stand with your clients, I've created a quiz on my website. If you can go, take the quiz, and then you will know where you stand. So are you in a beauty call relationship with your client? Is it love or is it too early to say? So the question is, would you prefer a beauty call relationship with your client or would you prefer love? And we have seen that it makes more sense even economically. There is more profit when there is commitment and collaboration. And that's the seduction model. So you got all the theory, and now we're going to uh, dig into the framework. Yeah, how do we organize this seduction? And I will just list it here, and then I will go through all of those. We will double check once. Okay, so first of all, in seduction, we need to have the right attitude. Yeah, so, and this is for everything you do, you need to have the right attitude, and I will tell you which attitude I suggest. Then you need to know yourself and what you want. Yeah. So know yourself first, where you want to go, and then you're ready to seduce. You need to choose a target for whom you can feel a void. If there is no void, so no need, no issue, no openness for somebody, there's no seduction. Yeah? You need to make them see as the answer to that void. And I will show you how. It's about seduction, it's about relationships, so between humans, it's all about connections. So the more connection, the more successful you will be. And you need to make it easy to choose you. Yeah, like in real life, but also in business, you really, rarely, rarely, you are the only solution out there. And usually you are not the best. And so what makes them then choose you uh, versus the company? First of all, the right attitude, yeah? And in seduction, everybody has his own style, and there's no problem with style, but this is the overall attitude that uh, usually is pretty successful uh, with the other channel, or the same. So, first of all, is making the client your number one priority. That the client really needs to feel in everything you do that the most important person and company is theirs, yeah? Whenever you think about yourself first, strangely enough, then you will be uh, less profitable, less successful. Be coherent in everything you do. So it's very unsettling if you are on a date with a person and this person seems very calm, and five minutes after she's all nervous, and then she leaves, and then she comes and back and she has another breath. Yeah, so the same for your brand. You need to have always the same story, how the brand was founded, the same tone of voice, and then the same touch and feel. Graphically, you need to look the same across all touch points. That every single date you have with your clients, with your clients, you need to look the same. Then you need, you need to feel and look confident. So we, I think we all have a tiny bit of lack of confidence, and it's fine, it's our parents. But the most important thing is that you need to like not talk about this, you need to you know fake it until you make it. Yeah? And in seduction confidence works much more than lack of confidence. Yeah? And then it's about seduction, it's not about the booty color on one and stand. So you can take the time and you should take the time. So the more time you take, the better it's going to be your relationship. Yeah? So don't rush into saying if the client doesn't call you yes, follow up, but maybe not in the, in the following five minutes, yeah? No look desperate. And then now we're going to look into the five pillars of the seduction model. So first of all, you need to know yourself, 
and then this is going also to define what you want. Yeah, it, it needs to be uh, pretty in line with each other. And the first is your value, then your vision, like long term, where do you want to be with your company, and then your overall objective. If you are a company, I hope that your uh, objective is profit most of the time. If you are a charity, it's different, and um, if you are a consultant, maybe it's different. Uh, if you are a social worker, it's different. So, um, what I'm going to do, every time I present you a principle or pillar, I'm going to give you like a, a challenge or a challenging question for you to find out at least one idea at the end of the presentation to boost your business, right? And so, for this pillar, my challenge to you is, uh, is your vision big enough? <coughs> so, usually companies, the company I work with, they have a very narrow vision. I mean, we see they have other problems, but because their vision of where they want to be in the future is so narrow, then they miss a lot of opportunities, right? So the more narrow you are with your vision, the less opportunities. So you need to really understand, okay, in five, ten years time, where I want to be and what do I want to stand for? And one thing is the vision and one thing is the product of service you are providing. Those are two different things, yeah? And if your vision is ambitious enough, then enlarge enough, then you will come up with other offers to you know. The second pillar is to choose a target for whom you can fill a void. Yeah? And so there are two elements. You need to define what is the void, so the need and, uh, and the, the issue that your client is currently facing and you want to tackle. And then define the segment. So there could be an issue that can be common to different group of people. Yeah, um, and it's very important that you do define, you profile that group of people. And when I work with small uh, companies, there is a tendency to uh, not choose because people see it as a, they see this election as a, a loss. But actually, by choosing and spending time understanding and profiling their their ideal target, their ideal clients, therefore those segments, is going significantly to help them. And so, um, my challenge to you is right now with your business or your future business, you have in mind that you are going to fill a void. You have in mind a need or an issue, but what if, and you are charging, you are planning to charge a certain amount of money. But the question is, what if you would have to charge double the amount of money? Not 10% more, 7% more, double? How would the, the need or the issue you are going to solve evolve? Because if I constrain you to, you need to charge double the price, then you will be much more creative in, okay, can I just double the price? Or uh, can I find people that have the same issue but where it's much more urgent and they will be ready to pay for a fast delivery? Uh, will I add new offer and services to my to my core offer? So just force you to, uh, to go for more urgent and important issues, yeah? The third pillar is make them see um, as the answer to that void, to that issue that they have. So first of all, you absolutely need to solve their problem. Yeah, sometimes some, some entrepreneur have a solution but it's only partially there and the work is not fully there. It's very important that there is an issue, you solve the issue. And then it's about seduction, right? So if you have been already seduced and lost, you know that your partner is, is there to solve your problem. And there are different problem solving techniques and different preferences, but it's not about solving one issue. It's all the little issue around the main issue. Yeah? So by, by going the extra mile, what I mean is that when you know your segments, you, you should know what other little problems they have, which other neg negative um, elements of their business life they are facing every day. And the same, they also want to have like some positive in their life. And very often it's about sales and profit, right? So exactly what are their targets and how can you make them succeed more, yeah? So my challenge to you is First, you really need to know the problem, yeah? I mean, you should know by now that when you ask to a person, uh, okay, what's your problem? The first answer is number five, 
Okay, but if you sit down, the person says, no, but tell me more. Are you really fine? No, I have this. Okay, tell me more. What is it? Like, you can dig a lot. So, if you stay at the very first or second level of their issue, your solution is not going to be really the solution of the problem. It's going to be the solution to the consequences. So, like a sort of reducing the pain. But for that, you will not be able to charge as much as you can charge if you solve the root cause of the problem. Okay, so, always think about, okay, but what's the root cause of the problem and can I have a better solution, therefore charge more money? And then the other thing is, um, I would like to challenge you is about this going the extra mile. Yes, so sometimes entrepreneurs um, narrow down to, okay, my job is to solve this issue, but then it's going to be very helpful if they just step back a bit and think about all those other issues. So running the company right now, it would be profitable to you to think about uh, your clients as having other issues um, and other uh, positive things they are looking for, how are you going to help them? And be very, very creative. If um, you are selling cars and your clients are companies that are looking to grow their sales, there are ideas, there are creative ideas, but that's why you can then charge more or be differentiated, right? Then, yes, the issue is about fostering uh, connection, a feeling of connection. Those are the three main drivers, so let them get to know you, so tell your story and don't be afraid about showing your uh, fragile side, especially if you make a mistake. Just, you know, it's about seduction, it's two human beings, right, that's the theory, so you can talk, totally talk about it, yeah. And then get to know them, and it's so important in seduction, and in general, in human exchange to get to know each other, right? And um, I was um, mentoring actually a bar uh, which just opened in Vienna uh, a couple of months ago, and they were we were talking about how to uh, to grow their business. And one of the things that they were really really reticent was to collect emails from their clients. But for me, it was one of the number one priority because then it fosters loyalty, right? And so. I managed to convince them by telling them, okay, but if you really wanted them to fall in love with you, if you think about a person you want to make uh, this person fall in love with you, you would want to communicate with this person and you would want to share news about your life and uh, vice versa. You want to get, you know, like information from them and get to know them. Uh, and in email from your clients is just that. And then show that you care. So seduction in reality is all about the other person, as I told you. So it's all about generosity and how do you share, you share that you care. And especially when um, the economy is not doing well, uh, and I'm talking about also coming from, uh, from corporate, when business is not doing well, there is the tendency to make choices that are more selfish as an entrepreneur versus generous. And, and um, generosity and showing that you care is what really like hook clients and wish you can charge them. Um, yeah, so the question is, right now you are having or you will be having clients and you are treating them in a certain way. Yeah, you, you have established a way to communicate, yeah, to manage the business. Now what you should think about is, okay, if th those were people I want to um, make them fall in love with me, what is the element that is missing? Maybe I don't communicate often enough, or I don't communicate on my story. Uh, so think about how do you um, make them fall in love? What is, and nobody is a perfect seducer, so we all have opportunities. Number five is make it easy uh, to choose you. So the first point, um, eliminate reason not to choose you. This is very important and you really need to be uh, pretty tough on yourself and on your company. Uh, don't be like an ostrich, you know, like the head in the sun. I was talking with uh, an entrepreneur who created a website and it's a sort of, let's say, a rich LinkedIn for entrepreneur. And then, okay, it was a very confusing website, but I mean, the idea can be interesting. But then I asked, okay, how do I invite all my LinkedIn contacts? this new platform. 
and there was no way, so the only way was to invite email by email my content, but I, so I don't even have an email, so, so this is a total, for me, blockage to the growth of this platform, and it might still grow, but wow, like in terms of uh, making it easy to choose you, uh, this is not happening there. So think about, okay, what are the reasons, and some could be tried, but how do you tackle, like tackle all the questions, and some you might decide, no, there is no solution, but if you don't even think about it, then you cannot find a solution. And then appear to be an object of desire. I mean, you have all been like in high school and you have, I, I think, uh, all love the most attractive or considered attractive uh, person in the high school. Because there is this aura of desire when a lot of people like the same person, strangely enough, or like with rock groups, right? Everybody, every girl is in love with the because girls, yeah? So, you can do the same. So you can appear as somebody that is desired and believed to be excellent by many people. And you can do this by winning awards uh, or competition. You can do this uh, with testimonial from your clients. So if there are clients that say that you're excellent, it must be true, right? And then in general, you know, this faking until you make it. So I know a company who had just started, small startup, but in their contact page on their website, they had like multiple country phone numbers and those phone numbers all arrive of course on the mobile of the founder, this uh, one man shop. But then the feeling that clients would get on the website was wow, it's already so huge that of course I want to make business with them. Yeah, so think about, you are Greek and Italian, we are all creative, so this one I can ask you. And then show that you are similar, yeah? So you can do that with your client by having the same um, wording you're going to choose, the same tone of voice, the same pacing in the communication. Um, you can just like, what you need to think about is how is the segment I want to tackle at the moment, how do they think and how do they, they dress and how do they talk and how do I adjust my communication to appeal them the most. And you don't want to disconnect, right? Yeah, so my turn to you is about the barrier, how do you tackle those barriers aside. We are very close to the end. Uh, what I wanted to do with you is uh, explain you a bit about this incredible cuisine business that I have. So it all started with this uh, viral video that I made, but then I started having requests for uh, selling cakes. Okay, so yeah, now we are up and running. Um, in the third month, we are selling cakes. So. The thing is that if I define my business as, hey, I'm selling cakes, the following question is going to be, okay, how much do they cost? Yeah? But if you do apply this model, price is not going to be the first thing. And yes, there is a crisis, but it's better to move from the first thing that your client is asking you to the third thing that your client is asking you. You have already built value in between, right? So, as I told you, I mean, you need to assume that I have the right attitude as a producer, so we can move to the first pillar. So you need to know yourself and what you want. So for me, what is important for me, my objective is profit. I'm yeah, not safe, so profit and building profit. And then my value, so I grew up in Procter & Gamble, my number one value is consumers is boss. Consumer is boss. And then, I have a lot of experience in premium luxury goods, so for me, a premium experience, this is what, what I really believe. I don't do cheap things, yeah? Then I choose a target, yeah? And it's not like I woke up one morning and say, boom, that's my target, but then I just try different things and then I notice a trend and then I, I feel that trend. And so my, uh, my victim is executive working moms feeling guilty about not spending enough time with their kids. Yeah, and I love this guilty element because uh, for those parents that are working, there is some money, there is guilt, therefore there is a premium price. And how do I make them see um, myself as the answer to their void? Uh, I make cost free customized cakes, whatever they ask, or I suggest, we make and we deliver 24-7. So I live in Geneva, 
and 24-7 is not really in the culture and I know my competition doesn't do it necessarily so uh, we do that and then foster a feeling of, feeling of connection so what I do when uh, my client contact me uh, we have a sort of cake, cake consultation I mean I don't have to spell it that way but it's all about okay you need a cake they need a cake yeah they spell their needs I say okay for, is it for your daughter's son? Yes, I will. Oh, what does she like? Cats. Okay, but flying cats. Okay, no problem. So we could make a flying cat. I check usually their Facebook uh, page so that I know a bit of their background about talking the same language and you know like hinting that you kind of know them already. Um, and the price actually is the really is the last thing we talk. They ask me for the price. I give the price. They say thank you. And and I know it's, uh, it, it didn't happen to me in other businesses, but it's just like. When you name those things, you know. When price is one of the last things you're asked, you know you got something right. And then after, I mean, it's all about premium experience for me. So, and I'm selling an experience, I'm not selling a cake. So I'm selling a beautiful, beautiful memory, picture with their friends. I'm selling the mom, like uploading picture on Instagram to show to other moms how great moms they are. And then on top, I send professional uh, picture and videos of the cake to the mom um, during the night of the event. And then naturally, the answer is what? We love the cake. Uh, it was amazing. So there is a very positive reboot after the service, which is um, always a good thing to have. And then make it easy to choose you. I am where they are, where my clients are. So my clients are executive working moms. Uh, and in Geneva, this uh, often is overlapped uh, with uh, uh, expatriates. And therefore, I am an expatriate and I'm also in mom's uh, Facebook group, despite not being a mom. Uh, and then the, the beautiful thing is that uh, now I have enough uh, raving clients that when somebody asks, do you know somebody making a cake, other people recommend my brand or myself. Like, uh, so very often I have two, three people recommending me somebody asks and then I get the deal, yeah? So looking desirable, yeah? So these are the kind of cakes we make. And so you need to mention this one, this white horse, the little girl uh, covered the horse in transparent coat and now the horse is in her room. Because of course I'm not selling a cake, I'm selling a dream, right? And she wants to keep the dream with her. So what's the result of all this? I'm currently selling at twice the price of the market, which is a good place to be. And so now I'm checking, okay, how do I charge more? But... Okay, I'm almost done. Um, so I want, what I want to check is, um, did you find like, um, did you see a new way to look at business? Yes? And then did you get at least one idea or something you're going to, to explore after this presentation on how to grow your business? Yes? Okay, so, um, of course I'm going to pitch you and sell you something. Uh, I have a, a customer seduction uh, course. Um, right now, I have just uh, really touched uh, on, uh, on this customer, customer seduction uh, model. But I will spend in January four weeks looking at each of the points and the sub points. So if you have a business and this resonated, this model resonated with you, it's really worth for you to jump in the training. It's an online training and it's actually I choose a pay what you think it was worth at the end. So there is, so that you have no reason not to take the course and get a better business. Yeah. So that's about me, this is how we can stay in touch and so I'm always trying to prove myself so if you can take note on how I did in the presentation and send me feedback and you can send to tell me more at serenademail.com and that's it. Thank you so much. And very seductive. Yeah, no, you didn't see anything, but uh, <laughs> it's the morning. Do you have...